Yeah. So, David, we always, uh, man, man, you had such a great career. I, I was a big fan of yours. And, uh, man, uh, and Donna. That's because we race a lot together. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, uh, I want to know, man, take us back to the start, man. David Strimmy. I mean, tell us, was your, you know, how did you come to love auto racing so much? Was your family involved? Did you have an uncle or a dad? Take us back to the beginning. How did it all start for David Strimmy? I'm going I'm to try to give you a really short brief uh, of my career up until this point. So right. both my parents raced. I grew up around racing in Indiana, northern Indiana. Your, dad, um, your, your mom and dad raced. Mom and dad raced. Look, wow. my mom was a school bus driver. My dad's a truck driver. We didn't have no money. I mean, like, I just helped my parents as, as, on their cars, and they're like, you know, hey, my dad said, hey, you want to try it? And I'm like, sure. You know, I was like 15. Second race out, I win. Of course, everybody's raising hell because I ain't got a driver's license, so I had to quit. <laughs> so I got a license. But uh, I was very fortunate where I had a lot of people that, I mean, I worked my butt off, and, and um, you know, I never thought, I would get to the NASCAR level. I thought, man, if I could just race for a living. And um, uh, there was a gentleman, he had an environmental service business and we ended up did some late model race. And we'd go from, uh, you know, uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan down to Southern Indiana. We'd be racing Winchester, Salem, all kinds of stuff. Well, then uh, we went to Phoenix and I remember it was cup weekend, tour racers, like 80 cars. Uh, actually, Kenny Schrader got me hooked up with this Robert Hamke. We go out there and, uh, we ran, we qualified fourth, led most laps, and, like, I lost by, like, that much to Schrader's wow. car. Scott Hansen was driving it. So Oh, Scott Hansen, uh, man. My buddy yeah. Scott Hansen. Wow, he so, beat you. Well, he just, he put tires on, and, and we went down three and four. I could have run him out, but we just raced hard. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what happened. So I'll fast forward. We did some ASA racing with Robert, and it helped my relationship there. And then, um, like, 2001 was kind of a pivotal year because it was either, like, Listen, I'm gonna move south and go work on the team, or or I'm gonna get a break. Well, Howie Leto actually I'll go back to 9/11. Uh, Scott Hansen couldn't be at Winchester, and he couldn't be at at Rockford, Illinois. And he called me. He said, "Hey," he said, "I want you to run Finetti's car at Winchester." I'm like, "All right." So Howie Leto, who was he's been Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, Tony Raines, he was well known in ASA. He was working at Herzog's, and they didn't have a deal. They were pretty much done. So we go down to Winchester, sit on the pole, led the most laps. We end up finishing ninth. Tranny at the end went out, but that enabled me to go drive full time for a, a gentleman, this Ron Daniels in 2002. And I'm like, shit, I just hit the jackpot. You know, I get to race for a living. I got a full time deal. Um, anyways, we ran 2002 and the first part we run fifth, I think first time out. And then we went to Irwindale, South Boston. We tore up a couple cars and then we start hitting our, like really running well. And anyways, we finished second that year, six times, we won twice. Still finished fifth points by like 15 points. But uh, that year, it was that was competitive. Our you finished fifth in, by 15 points, man. That yeah, was a competitive was, band. It was. So we, that year, um, uh, Lauren Rainier, who uh, mm -hmm. contacted me and said, hey, look, Ganassi wants to do a development driver. And I'm like, holy shit, you know, like, <laughs> all right, sign up. You know, I'm excited. And, yeah. uh, Anyways, you know, so we did that. I signed up, and I was supposed to run ASA the next year. Well, then we got booted right into the the, the Bush Series, which was James Finch, which is a great guy. Great guy. Wow. Got to drive. So McMurray and I split that car. Well, they go, all right, and you'll understand this, David. So in 03, we don't have sims. We don't have nothing. You just watch a video. We couldn't really test anywhere. So they just said, hey, look, we're going to go to Nashville. I'm like, shit. All right, we'll just go. So we went there, and at the, at the super speed, we run seventh, first time out. Anyways, wow. that year. Average. I never won, but my average was really good. We were supposed to run in 04 for uh, uh, James, and of course, there's a, a team manager there. He's like, "Well, I don't want a rookie and all this other shit." So, like, I remember this very specifically, beginning of January, because we're getting ready to go to Daytona, and all of a sudden, they're like, "Yeah, you're not going to drive." And I'm like, "What the hell?" You know. So I was under contract with Chip. Well, Todd Braun, he had uh, uh, Braun Racing at Trim Spa. So all of a sudden, boom, I'm in there. And, uh, you know, we didn't have a ton of money, but we were able to race and we did good. And then the next thing you know, I don't finish that year because, again, I'm a development driver. And boom, I'm over at Armando Fitz's place, which was wow. It was, and you'll understand this. So we go to Armando Fitz's as a Navy, great sponsor, money was good. But guess what? Armando's, you know, taking the money off that team and he's spending like 
He had super cuts, which was only good enough for half the team really funding. And then he's trying this dumb son of a bitch is trying to run three teams, you know. Like, <laughs> so, anyways, long story short, they go and end up. Uh, I mean, we had good runs and we did stuff, but like uh, at that time, Ganassi had started an in-house program, a Bush series with Reed Sorensen, which I got Reed the deal. So he was like second driver. So then in 06, they're like, hey, we're going to put you guys in cup. And I'm like, all right, well, that's everybody wants cup race, you know? Yeah. Well, guess what? I look back at it now and I'm like, that's the dumbest thing they ever did is put me and Reed, who are two rookies, and then Casey Mears only got a year under his belt, and we're going to put all three of us under one roof. And I'm like, this is stupid, you know? <laughs> and we struggled a lot. We had a rookie crew chief, and then uh, we got through that year, and 07 was really good. Um, I felt like I, I was in the, what they called the chase or whatever, uh, the top 12 all the way up through, I, I want to say, like July or something. And that was the year they had the COT car come out, yeah. and, and our company just wasn't prepared for that uh, that model car, and we struggled at races. and But anyways, we ended up that year, too, I learned a lot about NASCAR, where I never had agents. I'm just like, I just want to race, you know. And right. Juan Pablo was my teammate. Me and him got along great and read. Well, Reed had an agent. He just basically sit there and they, they, you know, suck chip off and got him to stay. And then I'm out. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I didn't know you were supposed to do all this. So then, uh, and again, Chip's, Chip's a good guy. You know, I yeah. like him. Uh, so then the probably best thing ever happened, I got dry for Rusty in 08, which was phenomenal. Rusty wow. Wallace, Stephen was my teammate. And we started out, I wasn't even going to run the whole season or even most of it. And, uh, we were very underfunded. We ran very well. Our team was, I was, I was probably the happiest I've ever been. 07 was pretty good, but 08 was good. And, and uh, that was the same year when everything started crashing and we had a home builder as a sponsor. Well, guess what? Oh, yeah. All of a sudden we ain't got sponsors and everything. And I remember I raced for like a month with no money. I was like, Rusty, I'm just, let's just go race. All right. And uh, I ran one car for 16 races. I mean, this thing was like beat up and, wow. but we loved it. It run good. So, uh, Anyways, that enabled me that year. I did testing for Penske, and I went and drove for Roger in 09, which I'm thinking, you know, now I got an agent. So I'm like, all right, yeah, we're good. You know, I got somebody, and you're at Roger Penske's, and uh, it just didn't work out, you know. And what happened is it's just where the company was at. And, yeah. and again, here I got an agent, which at the time I shouldn't have had an agent because this dumb son bitch <laughs> didn't do nothing either, you know. So uh, we got three-quarters of the way in the year, and they want to buy me out of my contract. They want to bring Brad in, and I'm like, Hey, whatever, you know, so they buy me out. And uh, what was the coolest thing about Roger? And I'm going to tell you, Roger, I can text him right now. He'll text right back. Yeah, Probably one of the best guys in racing. Him, he, Walt Zarnicky, who's his right-hand man, comes up with his paper in 2010. He goes, hey, he said, uh, I just want to let you know it wasn't you. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, Brad was racing, and they had the average of both of us. And, and Brad's average was the same as mine. I'm like, listen, I know the big business. You know, by now I've done seen it. You know how it is. It's like, it's always a driver than a crew chief or it's something, you know. So anyways, that didn't work out. And then from there it was, we had our own team and I just got burned out in racing, you know. So uh, again, in 13, we, I had some partners coming in because from 11 to 13, I owned part of a deal. And really at the end of the day, who I thought were my friends weren't. And the guy that I brought in, luckily I, I'd seen enough of these these idiots coming in that think they can just, you know, start winning NASCAR races. And he took a three-year plan, tried doing it in three months. And uh, I was protected enough with contracts and that. So uh, it kind of burned me out. I'm telling you, people that I thought were my friends that through, you'll understand this, through 2010 to 12, when nobody had jobs and it was hard keeping jobs, I'm talking thousands of people without work in yep. that industry, you know, I was keeping them working and doing stuff and paying them good and they just backstabbed me. So anyways, 14 was the last year and uh, Hillman, Hillman asked me to go race some and, and I did it because I always liked Mike and they're very, uh, again, these years from from uh, 2010 with Frankie Stoddard to 14, you're taking a car that, you know, you know what I'm saying, you'd run 30th to 36th, whatever, they're starting 43 cars. Right. Hell, so bust your ass all day run 40th you know at that time but <laughs> we're buying used tires and doing stuff anyways it just finally wore out and and, and and it's like i was telling you before we started recording a friend of mine said look just stand around and if if, if you don't if you know you're not going to miss it then you're done and i was just done you know i was right. burned out uh, but i remember there was highlights and people what i mean by like your loud race and people don't understand this 
we were at the Brickyard and we go there in 2012. And there was eight of us in 2011 and 12 that worked for, it was Inception Motorsports that I owned and, and two other guys. And, and uh, we would race and then we'd start and park, we'd make a little money, then we'd go race. Well, Brickyard paid, I think it was 200,000 or something at that time. Wow. So we go there and we're like, all right, we're gonna get qualified in. So we got qualified in, qualified 17th. And I'm like, man, we had old, what's that? That's awesome. It was awesome. We had Toyota helping us. Yeah. Can ask they're buying their used cars. Again, Chip was Chip's a good guy. So we ended up, we bought tires from everybody at that time. You know, they do qualifying runs, they all scuffs, or they'd have 10 laps. We bought all these tires. Anyways, we we bust our ass all day, run 18. And I mean, we just did a made together pit crew and everything else. Outrun the other two Ganassi cars. And you do you do this all day, and then you go, nobody even recognizes what we just did. You know, I know. Like, that's amazing what y'all did, man. 